வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோமெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் த ஸ்டாட்டிக் அனாலிசிஸ் ஆஃப் அப்பர் லிம் அண்ட் லோவர் லிம் வி வில் மூவ் ஆன் டு த நெக்ஸ்ட் டாபிக் விச் இஸ் டைனமிக்ஸ் வித் இன் டைனமிக்ஸ் வி ரெஸ்ட்ரிக்ட் அவர் அட்டென்ஷன் டு கைனமேட்டிக்ஸ் விச் இஸ் ஜியாமெட்ரி ஆஃப் மோஷன் விச் இஸ் டிஸ்கிரைபிங் ஹவு மோஷன் ஹேப்பன்ஸ் without worrying about the forces that causes or stops the motion so although we can study kinematics of uh, different segments of the body we restrict our attention to reaching and grasping for the next few classes or the next few videos so in this video we'll be looking at reaching grasping and manipulation what is this process of grasping what are the types of grasps and the kinematic chains so we are interested in analyzing reaching and grasping as we would analyze this as a mechanical system or as a machine because uh, although the human body is not entirely a rigid body we consider for the purpose of this analysis the segments of the limbs as rigid bodies in this case since we are talking about uh, reaching we consider the upper arm or the bone underlying the upper arm which is the humerus and the forearm the two bones that uh, underlie the forearm which is uh, radius and ulna as rigid bodies for definition a rigid body is a body that does not deform under application of an external force so in other words its size or shape does not change when a force is applied technically all bodies you know are not rigid so with uh, a large enough force any of these bodies will either crack or will change in shape and uh, size but for the normal physiological forces under consideration so for most re- ranges of forces that we will be discussing these bones and their dimensions remain intact so we consider these as rigid bodies and the movement of these bones with respect to each other we analyze as rigid body kinematics so as this movement happens uh, how is this movement happening this movement is happening by contraction of muscles something that we saw in the previous videos um, muscle contracts and moves one bone relative to the other bone which is what is causing the change in the joint angle or the change in the configuration of these rigid bodies so when the muscle contracts what happens is that uh, this contraction leads to a situation in which there is an accumulation of muscle mass closer to the proximal attachment let us remind ourselves what this proximal attachment of the muscle is called it's called as the origin closer to the origin the muscle belly becomes big changing the mass of the whole uh, system so it's not like the mass of the system is remaining distributed or the distribution of the mass of the system remains a constant as people are making movement this is not true so there is a slight variation as uh, this happens because when the muscle contracts uh, the origin of the system becomes slightly heavier right so modeling this is a non intuitive and relatively complicated uh, process we restrict our attention to rigid body modeling i mentioned this we restrict our attention to rigid body modeling in other words we model the bones as rigid bodies and we analyze movements between the bones okay there are different types of joints that are found when these rigid bodies interact with each other in the case of the human body for example when we discuss the elbow joint we consider the elbow joint to be a hinge joint right so that means that it is a joint that has one degree of freedom right this movement between the upper arm and the forearm 
that happens at the elbow joint happening at this uh, hinge joint 1 degree of freedom is one contribution to the total reaching what else is contributing to the reaching the movement that happens at the shoulder joint and then the movement that happens at the wrist joint. But before we consider the wrist joint in the, into the picture we consider for simplicity that there are only two joints under the discussion which is the shoulder joint and the elbow joint and we consider that the shoulder joint also makes movements in the same plane as the elbow joint. This is not actually true because the shoulder joint is a much more complicated joint but for now we consider this. So, this is the movement this is the system under consideration for us. So, let us uh, get back to our original discussion of reaching and grasping. What is reaching? Reaching is this uh, coordinated movement of hand and fingers to move towards the object that needs to be grasped and manipulated. So, I am reaching a, an object and I want to do something with it say this is the pen that I would like to grasp and do something with it I want to write with it for example. Right. So, uh, approaching the pen for example, is an example of a reaching task. So, this is a coordinated movement of hand and fingers note that there will be coordination at multiple levels as the hand is approaching there will be appropriate changes in shape of the hand and fingers according to the characteristics of the object that needs to be grasped and manipulated something that we will see in future slides. Grasping on the other hand is the act of holding and manipulating wrapping the fingers around the object either like this or like this and there are different types of these grasps wrapping fingers around the object and supporting it with the palm of the hand and then performing some manipulation activities with it right. So, this is grasping whereas, that act of uh, approaching the object is called reaching almost always reaching is followed by grasping and grasping is preceded by reaching. So, this is always the case. However, in biomechanics when we study it turns out that there are two broad fields of study reaching and grasping. In upper limb biomechanics there is a whole body of literature that studies reaching and then there is a whole body of literature that studies grasping. Uh, reach to grasp type of studies in comparison are rather limited. This is because uh, the type of analysis that is used for reaching is very different from the type of analysis that is used for grasping. Uh, reach to grasp type of study requires a, a very complicated model and assumption and relatively complicated analysis. So, those kind of studies are present although they are available they are rather limited in number and scope. Okay. So, this is reaching for example, reaching for the so that there is the hand and then it is reaching that ball that is reaching. Now, that is grasping look at that ball being held by the fingers that is grasping just for uh, uh, clarity repeating it one more time. Now, when I say grasping does it also include manipulation because sometimes I say grasping and then manipulation grasping and manipulation are these two things the same the answer is no because uh, a grasp is every static hand posture that can be held securely with one hand regardless of the orientation. So, I am holding that is grasp this is a grasp this is a grasp these are grasps various types of grasp. Manipulation involves an operation involves change of an orientation or a slight translation some kind of a, a movement of the grasped object. So, operating a grasped object in a presumably in a skilled uh, manner in a skillful manner. So, that the object orientation and its position is slightly altered to perform what is considered purposive or meaningful movement. So, anything we do must have a meaning it turns out that there are different kinds of movements that humans make most movements we would like to think that the most of the movements that we make are purposive movements are meaningful movements there is a reason why you do this there is a meaning for it there is a purpose behind this. So, most purposive movements are we like to think that these purposive movements are voluntarily controlled or those that are skillfully learned or learned and then applied using some uh, 
control mechanism from the central nervous system. So, so that is the idea right. For example, you have this uh, object and that is being grasped like this for example, this is grasping. So, there is a glass that is being uh, there is a glass that is being grasped like that right. And then you have this uh, object that is being manipulated in hand manipulation like I am having the pen and then I am writing with it. The pen does not leave the hand, but there is some movement that is perform that I am performing. There is some movement that I am performing to produce some desired purposive outcome right. For example, like this right. This is manipulation of a tool, there is a tool that uh, they are rotating. Remember this is actually you know you are holding this object uh, with uh, several fingers uh, wrapped around the object and then you are using these two fingers to move a particular movable part of this uh, tool to operate to perform a purposive action right. Let us go back and uh, visualize this one more time right. So, this is the hand held tool which is uh, being manipulated by this person this is what is being done right. So, this is manipulation. So, you are holding the object and changing its mechanical characteristics in terms of its orientation there may even be slight translation and so on and so forth. So, grasping itself can be classified into three distinct phases not in including if you do not include a manipulation then two distinct phases. One is the pre graph phase this is the phase in which the object has not yet been touched by the fingers. So, this is the first phase of the grasping task which precedes the actual act of grasping which precedes the actual act of touching the object then grasping itself. This is when the fingers wrap around the object. Remember depending on the type of object the shape of the object the texture of the object the size of the object the grasp type might vary, but not just that. It turns out that depending on what you plan to do with the object the type of grasp varies. For example, if there is a pen that I am picking up from the table that I am planning to use for writing right, I would pick it up in such a way that my thumb and index finger are likely to hold it so that I will write with it like this right. Suppose the pen is here I will pick it up like this I will pick it up like this so that I can write like this. But suppose the same pen is here I would like to pass this pen to somebody to write. Someone is asking can you pick up that pen for me and then I am taking in that case the grasp detail will vary the way I grasp it will be different. Now, I am not going to write with this pen it is the same pen it is the same hand that is grasping the pen the purpose is different. So, mechanics can be a window to identify the purpose of movement. So, I will grasp such that I will give it to someone in the second case. In the first case I will grasp such that I will write with it. So, there is a detail that varies I already mentioned uh, purposeful movement of the object relative to the environment. So, what is the purpose of this depending on that the manipulation depending on that the grasp planning will change depending on that the grasp phase will change depending on that the pre grasp will change. So, that means almost all cases the purpose of the movement is the king is what defines how the previous phases of the movements are going to be. That also means that by analyzing specific stages of the grasp I can understand what is the purpose, what could be the purpose, what is the intention is something that I can understand by analyzing the mechanics of uh, the movement itself something to keep in mind. You could do this experiment on yourself you could take a pen while you are writing you can take a video camera and uh, you know videograph yourself grasping a pen so that you will write and then take the same pen to pass it on to somebody you will realize the way you hold the pen with the fingers is completely different because the purpose is different something to note and keep in mind this is always the case. So, the purpose defines the end justifies the means. So, the purpose defines the method that is used to uh, you know hold grasp and plan the pre grasp. Right. So, what are the types of grasps that are there actually there are too many types of grasps uh, here we just define this 
into this five six broad categories. One is a cylindrical grasp, like I have this uh, bottle and I'm grasping like this, so that my this is actually not a cylinder per se, it's more like a cone. That's okay. I'm grasping. Assume that this is a cylinder, and uh, you know I'm grasping my fingers around this bottle like this. So, so, cylindrical grasp. Or then, uh, let's say that you are holding a hook. You are holding a tool. Let's say in this case a saw like that, and then you are holding. This is slightly different from the cylindrical grasp because my fingers are wrapped around such that the fingertips are ending on the palm itself. For example, this is not how it happens in the case of the cylindrical grasp because if you see here, my fingertips are not touching the palm because the object is a we can assume this object to be a rigid body. It is not a rigid body. You can already see the deformation, but we can assume this to be a rigid body because of this uh, rigid body, uh, these fingers are not able to touch the fingers. In the case of the hook grasp, you see that I am ho holding it like this and the fingertips are touching the palm, right. Then you have the keys, right. I am having a key that I am planning to, you, you know, manipulate to open a lock. By the way, trivial as it might sound, this is actually a very complicated uh, task in mechanics uh, because you will have to produce force in two different directions, a couple to rotate and that will have to be produced over a relatively very small area. So, on the two edges of the key, uh, which you will have to enter through a relatively small narrow hole, right. Uh, very complicated, I mean trivial as it might seem, we take this task for granted all the time, yet there are groups of individuals who are not healthy, who find it very difficult to perform this task, right. This keyhole uh, manipulation task, very com complicated task. So, this pinch is sideways, you are, you are uh, grasping this uh, key on two sides of this object, right, uh, also called lateral pinch, this is one type of pinch. Then you have precision grasp which you know is classified into different types in, in this case this is a pinch gra grasp, pinch grip with two fingers, pinch grip or, or I am grasping with three fingers in this case, right. Note uh, the way these fingers uh, are uh, located configured depends on the purpose with which you want to manipulate in that object in future, but in general you observe that there are three such that they form three uh, legs of a tripod also called as a tripod grasp. Then you can hold a circular object right, uh, like this. In this my fingers it appears as this is a small circular object that is why these fingers are almost touching each other, but then you see that I am still grasping this object around this circle, the circular grasp. While discussing uh, reach we are interested in analyzing the upper limb system as a kinematic chain. So, you can for example, consider the upper arm to be one link which is a rigid body and the forearm or the lower arm to be another link, another rigid body. They both are connected by a joint. In this case, this is the elbow joint, this is the elbow joint, right. So, this two rigid bodies connected with exactly one joint between them is called as a kinematic pair. This is two rigid bodies connected by a joint between them. If I have a, an assembly of rigid bodies connected by joints such that uh, you know they have to perform some task under some set of constraints, a number of such links that is one link, two link, three you know three link, four links and so on and there are several joints. There are in this case there are n links and n minus 1 joints. Right. It is called as a kinematic chain. What is the difference between a kinematic pair and a kinematic chain? A kinematic pair is a kinematic chain with exactly two rigid bodies. If you have only two rigid bodies then that is a kinematic pair, but if you have more than that it is called as a kinematic chain. Is a, so, kinematic pair is a particular case of the more general kinematic chain, ok. So, in this video we saw what is reaching, what is grasping, what is manipulation, what are the types of grasps, 
what is the process, what are the various steps involved in grasping, what are the types of grasps and uh, what is a kinematic pair and what is a kinematic chain and how purposive movement or purpose of uh, the grasp to a large extent contributes to the way in which you grasp and hold the object. With this we come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.